What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in October, heading into the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, Tesla stock is up enormous right now. It's up 20%. They just reported earnings so we're briefly going to take a look at their earnings their stocks reaction to these earnings and my personal opinion on the stock right now should you buy it should you sell it should you just hold it we'll go over that here <clears throat> in a couple of minutes and if you want to fast forward to that part the timestamp is down below in the comment section so all I ask from you is if you enjoyed the video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing and join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart Facebook group all of those are linked down below. So guys, let's get into it. Starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500 ended up closing the day up $8.53 today, up 0.28%. And we all know at this point, it's earnings season. We had Boeing report earnings today. I believe Caterpillar reported earnings today. They did poorly. Boeing did okay, but still not too great, right? Kind of a mixed bag earnings today in terms of, you know, those companies. We also have Microsoft, Visa, Amazon, Apple's next week. A lot of the big names are coming up. And what I'm seeing here is the markets are kind of teeter-tottering. If we zoom in a bit here on the five-day, five-minute, you guys can see we're kind of just hovering around, you know, 2880, 2980 rather to about 3015, right? Today wasn't too much of an eventful day, kind of flat. Again, we closed up about 0.28%, which is not much at, at all, really. So at this point, I think the stock market, you know, has a big potential to go up over these next couple of days. If the big name, big name companies, well, Microsoft already reported, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. But, you know, if a lot of the other ones like Apple and so forth do really well, you know, I think that's going to eventually drag up these markets. And we can see the futures right now, they're up only $2.50. So nothing crazy there. But overall, you know, just keep an eye on what the S&P does here. We're holding holding 3,029.90, which is a good sign. So watch for that break to those all-time highs, which are, you know, around 30.27. And again, we'll probably get there if these big companies like the Amazons of the world, Facebook, you know, Apple, these companies really do well over the next couple of trading days. So going to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, up 45 points today, up about 0.17%. Overall, we're trading in this little wedge here. I guess you can say it's an ascending triangle as well and overall we're just holding 26.6 at this point and we're below about 27.3 which is the all-time high putting us in this 700 point window um, that we're trading in so you know if, if the Dow stocks end up selling off Let's say some of the major ones report poor earnings. You know, we may be going down to test 26.6. Of course, if they do well over the next couple of weeks, you know, what I'll be waiting for is a break out of this resistance here, which would be a straight shot to the all-time highs, right? And then obviously, if we do break those all-time highs, we're going to be going to new all-time highs and really just continuing the uptrend in the market from there. And if we go to the five-day, five-minute, you can see, you know, we saw a pretty big dump off. This was because of Boeing a couple of days ago. And let me show you guys Boeing while we're at it. You know, Boeing tanked heavily a couple of days ago. That brought down the entire Dow Jones pretty much. And you can see it's been consolidating and kind of doing well and rebounding over these past couple of days. But overall, I'm just waiting to see, you know, what these markets are going to do. What direction are they going to pick? Like a definitive direction before really doing anything else in these markets in terms of, you know, placing long-term swing trades stuff like that. So in terms of the NASDAQ here, guys, you can see it's up 27 points right now, but this is the future. So let me just double check and see what we closed at at market close. That's up 15.5, uh, so $15.50 is what the NASDAQ closed up today, up about 0.19%. You guys can see it is breaking up here, so that is a pretty good sign. If we zoom out a bit, though, to that four-hour chart, we can see 
this is looking a bit more bullish than the SPX and the Dow, right? We're kind of breaking out of this ascending triangle wedge pattern. We actually held 78.80 as a support now. We're breaking up, looking to retest that resistance, very critical resistance at around 79.90, which we actually got rejected at multiple times in the past. So I'm thinking, again, if these markets earnings, a lot of these large cap, you know, tech stocks do well, you know, I think this is going to be shooting past the resistance. And at that point, we'll be at these all time highs at 8050 in no time. So that's really it, guys, these markets have been teeter tottering. So I'll wait me personally, you know, I would wait and see where are we going. A lot of people are saying up over these next couple of days. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Are they doing anything right here after hours? Because I believe they did report. Um, I didn't actually take a look too deep into their earnings yet, but they did report and I actually got a notification on Robinhood now that I, I think I, I think I'm right. But it was an 11% beat, I believe, in EPS on Microsoft. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. There's a chance that I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, I think they beat. So I'd just be watching out for these tech stocks and obviously all the other large cap stocks as well. So let's talk about Tesla. Well, we would be doing a market update or rather a trading update right now. But I honestly didn't do too much trading. You guys saw that I got in Procter & Gamble yesterday. And I'm actually holding this one as a swing trade trade and I'm up on that one pretty good right now and uh, I got him yesterday at about 120 what was it 121.90 on this dip here and uh, yeah I feel comfortable holding this one this looks pretty bullish in my eyes we're holding that 50 SMA I'd be waiting for that pop here on the five day five minute chart tomorrow that would be ideal and um, yeah this is just one that reported earnings I feel very comfortable holding this one over the next couple of weeks um, because typically if we look on this chart Chart, every time we've reported earnings, we've rebounded to the all-time high and really hit an all-time high from those earnings. Even if they, you know, even if the stock dipped before earnings, you know, it's done that before. Like you guys can see here, we dipped all-time high after that. You guys can see it. We did it again. Now we're looking to push to those all-time highs. So I feel comfortable holding PG. And really, that's it, guys. Look, I didn't add any more money to PG. Just holding my initial position from yesterday. And yesterday I traded AbbVie, which is also one that I'm watching here over the next couple of weeks as they are reporting earnings and as they're just looking extremely bullish on this chart. But now that I got that out of the way, not much trading today, just holding PG. Let's talk about Tesla stock, guys, because this one... I would not have guessed it would have gone this much in, you know, in the green after hours today. This is absolutely insane, right? And I've been talking to you guys on the channel how when Tesla reports earnings, grab your popcorn, right? This is the stock that it's always the most fun stock to watch because it's either up 10%, 20% after hours. It's either down 10%, down 20% after hours. And today's one of those days where it's up. So let me just pull up some notes I have here on my phone very briefly. And let's talk about what did they report in terms of the key numbers here. So earnings, they came in at $1.91 per share, I believe. Let me see that. Versus estimates of negative 24 per share. So what that means is analysts thought that Tesla, they predicted that Tesla was going to be losing money since their EPS is negative. But Tesla turned that, turned that around and made a profit of $1.91 per share, which is absolutely insane. That beat there, that's in I, that's in the hundreds of percent of beat pretty much, right? Revenue came in at 6.3 billion versus, you know, the estimate of uh, 6.45 billion, which is a slight miss. And one negative thing about this is that year over year, their revenue is actually down 7%. So that's a negative thing here. But like we'll go over in a couple of seconds here, they're, they have a, a gigafactory in Shanghai that's launching here over the next couple of weeks. And once that production kicks in, once they start selling cars, manufacturing cars out there in China, guess what's going to happen, guys? That revenue is going to go up. So I think year over year when we're looking, you know, if we're, let's say we fast forward in one year from now, the year over year growth in a year in terms of, you know, compared to today, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be positive due to that Chinese Shanghai factory. Another good thing that beat estimates in terms of these earnings, 18 point 
0.9% in terms of their gross margin. That came in um, ahead of the estimates, which were at around 17.7%. And the company now says it expects positive quarterly free cash flow going forward with possible temporary expectations or exceptions rather after it sank back to unprofitability earlier this year. We continue to believe our business has grown to the point of being self-funding, Tesla said, which is very good. Despite the return to profitability, quarterly revenues fell compared to the previous year, like I said a couple of seconds ago, for the first time since 2012. So that's really one of the most negative things in terms of this earnings report, in my opinion, right? And some other news regarding Tesla, guys. They said, we are already producing full vehicles on a trial basis in the Shanghai Chinese factory, from body to paint to general assembly. We have cleared initial milestones towards our manufacturing license and are working towards finalizing the license and meeting other governmental requirements before we begin ramping up production and delivery of vehicles from Shanghai. So overall, guys, those are some key aspects from this earnings report. And let's talk about now, what should you do? Should you buy Tesla? Should you sell Tesla? Should you just hold it? And first of all, don't do anything based off of my opinion. You should just really understand from your point of view what you want to do based on your risk reward and your time horizon with Tesla. I'm just here sharing my opinion so you guys can then maybe formulate your own opinion from that and kind of just really understand where my thoughts are. So right now, we have to draw out some resistance levels on Tesla because we've really just broken above so many after hours here because the stock again is up about 300 it's up to about 307 bucks which is a 20 percent pop so let's zoom out here to the one year one day we can see okay we're at a resistance right now or we were out of resistance at about 260 we broke that we broke 275 we broke 290 so at this point the next level that i'm looking to see tesla maybe reaches to it's going to be around 320 bucks based on this one year one day chart which is a level that we haven't been at in nearly 10 months at this point the last time we were there was back in february of 2019 so that could be a, a level that you know tesla does go to but me personally at this point in time i'm viewing tesla as a hold right we may see some profit taking tomorrow which is why I don't want to just rush in and buy this right now because, again, we might see profit taking and the RSI right now, it's extremely, extremely overbought. So the fact that we're really overbought, profit taking might come in. I view this as a hold, maybe even a sell if you were really swing trading it or you had obviously call options, you're probably going to sell those at a massive profit. If you're long-term investing in this for the next couple of years, obviously this is probably a hold for you but in the short term here we may cool off profit taking may kick in we may be going down to 293 this could be a level that you know we may find support at and then slowly run up to 320 or if it doesn't even cool off if we see no profit taking if the hype train continues to push tomorrow we may be going up to 320 without a pullback so overall those are kind of my thoughts on tesla and tesla's earnings in general i think these earnings were very very good especially since they turned a profit one negative thing is revenue year over year is down 7%. But again, as Shanghai starts to produce these cars, manufacture these cars, bring a lot of cars to market, I think that revenue should be pushing up um, next year and obviously over these next couple of years. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on Tesla? I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. And let's go rapid fire right now. What stocks am I looking to trade? There are two in particular here, Visa which I believe they're reporting on the 24th, which is tomorrow. Yep, I'm correct. Visa's looking really interesting right now, guys. We're at a level of support at 170. We've been consolidating at this level over the past day at this point, right? As you can see based on today's price action. And we're actually breaking out of the moving average resistances on this five-day, five-minute chart, which is telling me that we might have some upside here in Visa. And it's also telling me that it's really holding and solidifying 
solidifying that 170 support. So I think Visa has a lot of potential here up to the next resistance at about 180, and that offers around a 4 to 5% profit. And mind you, again, they report earnings tomorrow. So this can either pop up the stock aggressively if, it, if they report poor earnings and we, and we break 170, that's obviously going to be negative. We may be going down to 165, which is a key support that I'm looking at here past 170. You know, I personally wait until after earnings. That's what I'm going to do with Visa. You know, if I miss the move, that's okay. That's what I personally feel comfortable doing, waiting after earnings based on my risk tolerance. But let's say we don't miss the move. You know, let's say they report good earnings and they kind of hover here. This could be a good entry point in my opinion up to around 180 bucks again about five percent there microsoft they're in a similar situation where they they held a major support at around 133 134 ish right you guys can see it and we're in this horizontal pattern where there's a key resistance at that all-time high around 141 142 so we're at a point right now where we could pop up here and make roughly a 2.83 percent on microsoft and that goes back to, you know, those all-time highs on the NASDAQ, you know, if Microsoft pushes up, if Apple pushes up here, Facebook, a lot of these tech-heavy stocks, if they push up, I think this NASDAQ is going to go to the all in, in, to the all-time highs here in a very short period of time. So Microsoft, I, they did report earnings today. Let's just take a look very quickly and see what they did report here. Did they report earnings today? Yeah, they did. Let me, I'm just double checking, guys. And if I can't find it, I'm not going to waste any time on it um, because I didn't really look at it before this video. But here we go. Microsoft beats EPS $1.38 versus $1.24 expected. That's very good. They also beat on sales $33 billion versus $32 billion. And this is actually not really moving too much here after hours, which is good for us because this can open up an entry point tomorrow if you're one of those people that likes waiting until after earnings. So I'm watching Microsoft tomorrow on that good earnings report from those you know initial EPS and revenue numbers. Another one that I'm watching is AbV, guys. This is reporting earnings on the 1st. Seems like we're pulling back down here. Maybe a retest at 76 bucks could be an entry point for a swing back up to 79 if they report good earnings. 81 bucks is in reach after that. So AbV does have a lot of potential here in my personal opinion opinion. Johnson & Johnson took a massive tank after they reported earnings. Good earnings, I believe it was last week, because they got a new case of asbestos yet again in one of their products. I forget which product it is off the top of my head right now, but that tanked the stock. And overall, seems like we did end up holding 128, 127 as a support. That's a good sign, right? Now we're looking to pop back up if we break this 180 SMA, the 50 SMA, and above 130 32, I think that's going to be a massive bullish move that could push us back up to that 137 level, which would be around a 4% gain. And let's say we want to get in now, jump the gun a bit before the technicals completely confirm themselves. You know, we can make even more, right? 5 6%, um, you know, up, upwards of 6% if we were to buy here and sell at 137. And you guys can see there's a lot more profit even above 137. This thing can go to 139. It can go to 140. 42. It could go to 144 as well. These are just some things that I'm watching. The last one that I'm watching that I'm going to talk to you guys about in this video without it getting too long is Chipotle Mexican Grill, ticker symbol CMG. They reported earnings, I believe, yesterday. The stock ended up tanking, right? Estimated earnings as you guys can see here, were $3.26 for EPS. They came in at $3.82, and the stock ended up tanking from $8.60 down to where it is right now at about $7.88, opening up around a 9-10% profit margin. And overall, you notice how CMG's stock, guys, it's uptrending over the past couple of months. So I think any stock that's uptrending, very strong company like CMG is, you know, I think it's worth watching when it takes a massive dip and opens up a margin of profit because as swing traders which I'm mostly a swing trader I'd say I day trade a lot as well but my bread and butter is swing trading you know what we look for 
is that opening and profit and things like this again it's always worth watching because money could be made here once it consolidates recovers and potentially moves back up so that's really it for this video guys if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market investing trading personal finance and let me know down below in the comments again what are your thoughts on tesla the markets in general any individual stocks and earnings that you are watching let me know. I'd love to know what you guys really have to say and what you guys are watching in the markets right now. And don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. Those are all linked down below as well as my Instagram and Twitter. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.